In order to demonstrate the impact of box volume, vent cross section, and tuning frequency on the length of a vent in a subwoofer enclosure, I put together some quick designs in SketchUp. And what I've got here are three different size enclosures, all of them tuned to 28 hertz, and all of them with a 1 by 12 slot port. I drew the vent outside of the box to kind of exaggerate what's going on here. And the first one is this absurdly small enclosure. It's exactly one cubic feet of internal volume. And with one cubic feet of internal volume, you need a vent that's over three feet long in order to tune this enclosure to 28 hertz. So this is really impractical. It would take a lot of work in order to fold that vent inside of a subwoofer enclosure. And it just shows the impracticality of a very small box. Now on the other side, I made an absurdly huge box. This is a four cubic foot box with a cutout for a 10 inch subwoofer. It's also tuned to 28 Hertz and it also has a one by 12 slot port. And now we see that the vent is shockingly small. It's seven and 29 60 fourths of an inch long. A vent that size is very small. It would be trivial just to put that vent inside of the enclosure. Wouldn't have a big impact on the volume and would be an absurdly easy subwoofer enclosure to build but it's also four cubic feet. So it's probably a very impractical subwoofer enclosure. Right here in the middle is kind of the middle ground. This is a two cubic foot enclosure. Again, tuned to 28 Hertz with a one by 12 slot port. And that slot port is 17 and three quarters of an inch long. So that would be a whole lot easier to fit inside of your two cubic foot enclosure. And of course, all of these are tuned to the exact same frequency. Now, a lot of people might say, well, if they're tuned to the exact same frequency, that means they're going to sound exactly the same. Well, that's not the case at all. And so I went ahead and I modeled these in WinISD using a Dayton Audio 10 inch subwoof. And what we have here is the transfer function for all three of these enclosures. This is the transfer function for the one cubic foot enclosure. It's got a bump that's centered around 50 hertz and the F3 is about 28 hertz. So it's three decibels down at 28 hertz. And that's not really a very good design. That might be fine for rock and roll music. That might be slightly better than a sealed enclosure, but I wouldn't call that a very nice frequency response. It's not terribly loud. It's not terribly low. So that one cubic foot enclosure isn't a very good enclosure. Let's take a look at the two cubic foot enclosure here, this blue line. And now we see something entirely different. We see that anything above about 47 hertz, the two are going to be nearly identical to each other. But the blue one, the two cubic foot box, tuned to 28 hertz, gets a bump slightly above 30 hertz. And the F3 is a little bit lower. And I would argue that that's going to sound a lot better. You've got more lower bass. It's louder and lower. Let's take a look at that giant four cubic foot box. And we see that this one is probably not going to sound terribly good. It's probably a little bit on the absurd side. It's got almost five and a half, almost six decibels of boost at 30 hertz. So that's going to be very loud and low. And looking at the three of these, it seems to me that the big four cubic foot box is hands down the winner, because if you didn't like that sound pattern, you could at least EQ it down. But before you decide on which one of these to use, you've got to dig a little bit deeper. And in WinISD, I like to look at two other things. I like to look at the cone excursion. This tells us how much that subwoofer is going to move. So this is assuming that I'm throwing 480 watts at the subwoofer. The rule of thumb is you're supposed to model this with 80% of the peak power of the subwoofer woofer this sub can handle 600 watts so 480 watts is what we're throwing at it and the first thing that i want you to, to see is that our one cubic foot box will exceed its x max at around 23 hertz and that's pretty low and there's not much going on down there you could probably build the one cubic foot box and get away without any kind of subsonic filter because in the really usable range of the subwoofer around 40 hertz you're not going to be exceeding the x max of the subwoofer but the two cubic foot box will slightly exceed the X max at slightly below 40 hertz. And on the low end will also exceed the X max and do so more aggressively than the two cubic foot box. And if you make the box even bigger, you go up to the absurdly large four cubic foot box. You see that basically at any frequency below about 45 hertz, you're in danger of exceeding X max pretty much all of the time. As the enclosure gets smaller, you've basically got a tighter spring inside the enclosure as the air mass gets harder to compact. And you basically end up with more cone control in a smaller enclosure. 
the lesson here is that perhaps the one cubic foot box won't sound very good and perhaps the four cubic foot box is going to sound bad because it's going to exceed its x max and might damage itself so the one in the middle is probably the best one so it's a good candidate for an enclosure or rather a better candidate for an enclosure than the other two and also it's a reasonable enclosure to build and fold that port somewhere into the enclosure the other thing i always like to look at is the air velocity of the port the port air velocity ideally we want to keep this below 18 meters per second if you're using a flared port 36 meters per second would be just fine that one cubic foot box all you've got to do is put a flare on that port and you're not going to get any chuffing but the other enclosures you've just simply got way too much airspeed and so they won't be particularly good designs now another option is to adjust the tuning frequency. So what I've got here are three two cubic foot enclosures. The one in the middle is the copy of the one we just saw. It's got a one by 12 vent and it's tuned to 28 Hertz. And what I wanna show you here is the impact of the tuning frequency on the length of the vent. So this one here, the first one is tuned to 24 Hertz. So it has a lower tuning. And when the tuning gets lower, the vent has to get longer. So instead of having a 17 and three quarter inch vent, we've got a 25 and three sixteenths inch vent. The problem of course, is that a longer vent gets more difficult to deal with. You have to find some creative way to fold that vent into the enclosure. Let's consider what happens if we were to increase the tuning frequency. So this enclosure right here is again, two cubic feet. It's got the same one by 12 vent, but this time the enclosure is tuned to 32 Hertz. That's something like you might expect in a car audio setup. We tend to see car audio subwoofers tuned slightly higher because you end up with a vent that takes less space. So here the vent is 12 and 59 60 fourths of an inch. We'd probably just round that up a little bit to something like 12 and 15 16 or you might just go ahead and round it up to 13 inches. Now let's pop back into WinISD and let's take a look at how different these three enclosures are gonna sound. So we're going to start off with our baseline, which is our two cubic foot, 28 hertz enclosure. And then we're going to add to that the one that's tuned lower. And we see that the black line is the lower tuned frequency. We get a very flat response. It's going to be flat all the way down to about 26 hertz. And it's going to have an F3 somewhere in the neighborhood of 21 and a half hertz. So if you're trying to build a sound quality enclosure, if you're trying to build a home theater enclosure that can hit those lows for your low frequency effects, that might be a fantastic subwoofer enclosure. Let's take a look at what happens when we have a higher tuning frequency. So this is the 32 hertz enclosure here in red. And we see that we get a nice peak in our output somewhere around 36 hertz. So this is gonna be a lot louder enclosure. And for most people, this is gonna sound pretty good. It's gonna have an F3 of somewhere around 26, 27 Hertz. Now let's take a look at the other things we should always look at. Let's take a look at our cone excursion. What you're gonna notice is that the higher tuned enclosure here, let's just show that one only here in red, is gonna stay below its X max until it gets down below 30 Hertz. This particular enclosure is gonna perform really well, especially if you throw an infrasonic filter on it. Make sure you stay until the end and I'll show you how to set up an amplifier with an infrasonic filter. Now the one with the ultra low tuning, the one that's tuned down to 24 Hertz is gonna have a little bit of a cone control problem in that range between about 25 and about 45 Hertz. And that might be problematic. Whereas the one that's tuned to 28 Hertz is still gonna have a little bit of a problem, but it's not gonna be quite as bad. Now let's check one more thing. Let's check our air velocity. Uh, so this is the port air velocity. And what you see is that all three of them exceed the 18 meters per second guideline. You definitely will need to flare the port on all three of these designs. All three of these enclosures are tuned to 28 Hertz and they're all two cubic foot enclosures. But as you can see, the length of the vent between these three enclosures. So what gives, why is that? Well, the very first enclosure with the 17 and three quarter inch vent. It's the same one we've been looking at all along. It's a two cubic foot enclosure with a one by 12 slot port tuned to 28 Hertz. So we've got a 17 and three quarter inch long vent. This other one, however, we've made the vent an inch wider. When the vent cross sectional area gets larger, the vent has to get longer. So now the vent is 37 and 11 64ths of an inch long to give you the exact same tuning frequency, but with a larger vent opening. Now, why do you want to do a larger vent opening? Because that larger opening is going to cut down on the chuffing. It, it's going to impact the airspeed velocity in the port. And that's really important. 
Well, what happens if you make the vent even bigger? So this one is a three by 12 vent. And as you can see, it's now 56 and seven eighths of an inch long. It's comically long. And the reason why I'm showing you this is I kind of want you to understand that sure, you can get rid of vent noise by making the port cross-sectional area larger, but there reaches a point where the vent then becomes absurdly long. This vent is almost five feet. And that's just absolutely insane. It's completely impractical. Let's pop over into WinISD and let's take a look at what these three enclosures will look like. This right here is the transfer function for the two cubic foot box tuned to 28 hertz with the one by 12 slot port. The cross sectional area of the vent will have no impact on the transfer function. And we can see that here when we add the others in, the colors just lay on top of the existing line and nothing at all changes. So changing the cross sectional area doesn't change the sound of the box. And if we look at the cone excursion, we see that once again, changing the cross sectional area does not change the sound of the box. You're still gonna have the same cone excursion issues. So what is gonna change when you make the cross section of the port that much larger? Well, that's easy. That port airspeed is going to change. And what we see here is the original two cubic foot box has some pretty big port airspeed problems, probably impractically so. However, when we switch to the two by 12 slot port, we find that we're gonna be very close to our 18 meters per second threshold we try to stay under, and we can easily just put a flare on this port and solve the problems. Honestly, it's probably not gonna chuff that bad. There's really no issue. And then when we switch to the much larger three by 12 slot port, there's no issue with chuffing whatsoever. But of course, that is completely impractical. You'd be much better off using a smaller cross section and flaring the ports like I did in my home theater build. If you wanna see the ports in my home theater build, check this video out right here. If you'd like to learn how to set the infrasonic filter on a car audio amplifier, click on this video right here. Or you can hit the subscribe button and I'll see you on the next adventure.